Do you feel frustrated trying to grow your franchise? Are you having trouble balancing your consumer and franchise development marketing? Do you wish there was an easier way? Imagine if you had a proven roadmap to take your franchise's marketing from costing you to making you money. That's why we've created the Franchise Growth Blueprint. We walk you through the exact same process that we use to run franchise marketing campaigns for our clients at scale that has resulted in triple digit growth. This blueprint isn't for anyone. It's not for people just starting a franchise. It's not for franchises without long-term goals. This is for franchises that want to scale up their marketing in a predictable and profitable way using a proven roadmap. If you want to sell more franchises, keep your current franchisees happy, and learn from people who have already done it, go to FranchiseGrowthBlueprint.com and sign up today. That's FranchiseGrowthBlueprint.com. Hello, everyone. Welcome to another episode of the Franchise Marketing Podcast. Today, super excited. I have Maria Jukov. She is the CEO and co-founder of Ink Tattoos. Maria, welcome to the show. Hi, thank you so much for having me. No problem. It's great to have you on. So for our listeners who haven't heard of you and Ink Tattoos, what do you do? So I am the founder, along with my husband, um, of a new brand in franchising, uh, Ink Tattoos. And uh, just as the name suggests, we're a tattoo boutique. So we are um, a custom shop for anyone with all levels of experiences of tattoos. Um, so you don't have to have, you know, a full sleeve walking into the door. We really place an emphasis on making people of all backgrounds feel welcome. Um, and we've kind of re reimagined the tattoo experience. That's what we like to say. So um, we have been compared to like the Apple store of tattoo parlors, if that gives you kind of a visual um, of what we what the shop looks like inside. Um, and we're a new brand to franchising. So we're now just starting to, to grow and to really um, look for our next expansion plans. Cool. Very interesting. So what made you decide to go down the franchising route? Um, so it was really from our, our personal experiences, just kind of how quick background of, of how we got started in this. Um, I, I'm not a tattoo artist, neither is my husband. We actually didn't have any background in tattoos before we started this. Um, but we did have a business background and we realized that, you know, there was um, a kind of a disconnect with the modern tattoo customer um, and what the current experience of, of getting a tattoo can be sometimes. Um, and so we created Ink to really kind of just bridge that gap. Um, and make, uh, you know, just, just the experience more in line with what today's consumer looks for. So anything you can imagine from even booking an online appointment um, to getting an estimate, to getting a digital payment, to getting an appointment reminder, these little things, um, they, they're, they're pretty rare in, in the industry right now. Um, and so we just kind of wanted a more streamlined experience for the customer. Um, we wanted to expand by franchising because uh, it's it's a good way to get the name out quickly. Um, it's a great way to grow quickly and just still keep that really consistent, smooth experience across locations. Very cool. So if I'm not mistaken, from my research, you have two locations right now so far. Is that right? So we have one flagship location and we're actually kind of starting plans for a second location um, when COVID happened. So those plans have been kind of put on hold for now. And we're really focusing on franchising um, and just dedicating our time and energy to to that right now. Cool. So tell me more about it. What's what's your experience been like so far? It, with franchising or or with tattoos or franchising? <laughs> franchising. Um, franchising is is totally new to us. So we um, we filled out our we got our FDD done. We did our first trade show in February 2020. And um, literally about two weeks later is when everything started to really get, get spun up with COVID and, you know, places started shutting down. And so the only kind of franchising we've known has been uh, franchising during COVID, essentially. Um, so that's been, it's been challenging in, um, in a couple different aspects. One is obviously travel is a little bit restricted. Two, um, you know, as we all know, franchising is a longer sales cycle. Um, there's a lot of you know, getting out in front of potential um, franchisees, uh, it's a big decision for them. And so I think people have been a little bit um, more cautious about a new brand starting out uh, during a franchise. 
Um, the kind of upside to that has been that we have gotten to dedicate a lot of time to meeting professionals in the franchise, like the franchise space, like yourself, right? Um, and really getting to know the, 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 you know, all the companies that can help out with whether it's marketing, whether it's strategy, whether it's, um, you know, expos and things like that. So it's gotten us um, really an opportunity to focus on on that aspect of it. And that's been really nice. Awesome. So what are, what are some of your biggest learnings after, you know, meeting, networking, you know, kind of acting like this sponge of knowledge, if you will, yeah. throughout this COVID period? Um, there have been a lot of lessons. Um, I don't know if I can just distill them down really quickly, but um, I think the biggest thing has been to be really picky about the first few, um, you know, open locations, because there is, um, you know, there's almost kind of a, a FOMO effect of, you, you see other brands opening a lot of locations or you see somebody expanding really quickly and, you know, you kind of think, you know, are we doing something wrong? Is something missing? Um, so what we, you know, have to remind ourselves is that, uh, you know, the quantity quality thing, right? We don't want to, especially for our first, you know, few units that are going to be opened. Um, we really want to focus on very quality candidates, um, and we really want to focus on those people that we trust with this brand and we trust will do a great job of kind of, you know, passing the torch off of this brand too, right, in those terms. Um, and so we, you know, that's that's been kind of our strategy for growth is just to to stay small. Our um, So our corporate team is, is myself and my husband are very lean in, in those terms. Um, and that's really kind of given us the freedom to, you know, really focus on finding those people that we absolutely want to work with, absolutely trust, and absolutely want that that long term relationship with. Um, cool. And and how has that journey been going so far? You know, like it's one thing to say yes, we're going to be picky, but when someone's ra- waving that check in your face, it can be real tempting. Yeah. No. I mean, it, it is. But you know, I think we keep coming back to this is a long term commitment. So as far as a franchise candidate, we don't want someone who is you know, just dives head first. We, we want people who are excited about the concept. Absolutely. We want people who, um, you know, see this, see our, um, our deck, see the visual, see what the shop looks like inside and, and understand the whole concept um, and, you know, are excited about it. But we want people to do their homework. Um, and, you know, like so many, um, you know, so many other brands, we really want to be selective about, those people coming in. So we're still looking for our first um, franchise owner. Um, we've had a lot of great conversations with uh, potential candidates. Um, the other thing we're looking at is just a specific geographic area for right now, um, based on where we can most easily support those new locations. So, um, you know, it would be tempting to say, yes, we're going to go ahead and register in every state, and we're going to expand nationwide, you know, on day one. That's not what we want. We really want that kind of smart, strategic, measured growth um, in areas where that are easily accessible to us, um, where we can, you know, where we know that we can fully support the candidate or the open location. Um, mm-hmm. So that's what we've been focusing on right now. Awesome. That that's super exciting. So, how have and I know it's it's early on, Maria, but how have you been? Um, helping to like, what, what strategies, what tactics have you been using with these conversations that you've been having with people to make sure you're only bringing people in that are, are really bought in, as you mentioned? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So that's, um, I think that goes back to, it's not just one conversation. It's a series of conversations, right. During the whole vetting process. And, um, we very much understand that, you know, as we're vetting, um, the applicants, they're also vetting us because, you know, there are thousands of brands out there, um, and their resources are, are obviously finite. Um, so they're, they're being selective, we are being selective, and it's about finding that right matchup. Um, and so what, what we really wanna convey is that um, we want people to understand the potential of this concept. Um, you know, it's, it's nothing like a tattoo shop that you might imagine. Um, you know, everything about us is, um, it's new. It's a new way of approaching a problem. It's a new way of approaching an industry that's been around for a very long time. Um, both in how we take care of the customers and also how we take care of our artists in terms of, you know, we hire them as um, salaried employees with benefits, with health care, with paid time off, instead of, 
you know, the typical uh, 1099 independent contractor model. So, um, so there's a lot uh, in this business model that's kind of new, new to the space. Um, and we really want candidates to understand that. So we want them to be excited about the concept. Um, we want them to really understand the potential. And also we want them to understand that this is um, a new brand and they're really getting in on the ground floor of um, a huge opportunity. So, um, you know, somebody who's coming in on that ground floor is going to get a lot more face time with the founders. Um, they're going to get a lot more kind of personalized attention than somebody coming into an established system. They're going to get a lot better selection of prime territories than, again, somebody coming into an established system where everything prime has been, you know, sold out for, for many years, if not decades. Um, and so we really want kind of somebody who um, understands the potential of rewards and is able to balance those um, with the risk of coming into a new system. Because we, we're very realistic that, you know, there is um, a, a measure of faith that they're putting in um, coming into a brand as new as ours. Yeah. And you you brought up something interesting that I, I, I want to call out is that you're almost like flipping the the normal tattoo parlor on its head, if you will, you know, as you mentioned, creating that Apple like experience. So I'm, I'm guessing there's a lot of education involved too on, you know, how you're going to be totally different in the in an industry where people have this very kind of like strict view of what a parlor would be. Mm -hmm. We'll get right back to the show. But do you feel frustrated trying to grow your franchise? Are you having trouble balancing your consumer and franchise development marketing? Do you wish there was an easier way? Imagine if you had a roadmap to take your franchise's marketing from costing you to making you money. That's why we've created the Franchise Growth Blueprint. To find out more, visit FranchiseGrowthBlueprint.com. That's FranchiseGrowthBlueprint.com. Now back to today's episode. Yeah, so um, we, I think over the last two years that our flagship store has been um, open here in Northern Virginia, um, we've kind of proven out that concept, right? So right now, it, it's really great to see, you know, customers with all levels of experience coming in. Um, so in fact, just the other day, we had a group of um, uh, ladies graduating from Divinity School. So they were going to be um, reverends uh, coming in to get a tattoo. And, you know, it was just one of those moments where you look at it and you're, like, wow, these, you know, these folks are coming in and they're, the fact that they're comfortable enough to, to walk in um, and ask for exactly what they want and walk out with, you know, a great piece that they love, I think is a testament to, to the system that we've built. And so we've really emphasized um, just taking care of customers, customer service, really modernizing things. Um, and also, by, you know, by the same token, taking care of the artists. Um, because I think what we found is that, uh, you know, we take away a lot of the pain of normal kind of business um, dealings for the for the artists. So instead of now worrying about having to file a license, having to pay their taxes, you know, having to deal with rent, we take all that away from them. And now they're they're coming in, they're showing up, they're doing their artwork, which they love, um, and then that's all they need to worry about. So that's that's kind of the the concept. Awesome, I love it. You know, just empowering artists to do what they actually want to do rather than being stuck in the mundane paperwork. Right. Exactly. <laughs> awesome. So, you know, you, you've had your flagship store open for two years. What has uh, the consumer side of marketing look like for you? I'm, I'm eager to learn more about that. Yeah. So uh, I think we're, we're in a business that um, is actually very easy to market. It, it it's so visual Um, you know, it's a, it's a strong brand. We, uh, we stand out um, and it, it's easy to market. It almost markets itself. Right. I like to say that. Um, so we kind of think outside of the box in those terms. So whether it's digital ads, um, whether it's reaching out to uh, partners in the community, we're really big on, on giving back to the community. And that, that's part of a, um, I guess, a, a bigger strategic marketing um, initiative. But we, um, you know, we make, um, we do outreaches to uh, apartment buildings, condo buildings, things like that. Um, and just say, hey, you're new to town. You know, we're here. Come check us out. Everyone is always looking for, uh, you know, their next tattoo artist, right? Um, and so it, it's, it's really a combination of, I would say, digital, traditional, um, and then just kind of more out of the box thinking of whether it's community involvement, sponsoring a race. Um, you know, sponsoring a food truck, which we did recently, things like that. 
Cool. I love it. Yeah. And you know what? There, there's nothing like that, almost like grassroots marketing that really kind of embeds yourself mm-hmm. and your franchisees into a community. Yeah, no, I, I absolutely love it. We, um, and, and one of the cool things about, um, you know, having a, a new brand um, as new as us is that uh, the field is wide open with how we want to market it, right? And seeing what's more effective. Um, so if there's an opportunity to l- reach out and get our name out there, um, you know, we're going to try it and, and kind of see what happens and see where we get the best ROI. Um, so it's, it's nice to have that latitude to do that. Awesome. So going back to a question I asked you earlier on the franchise side, I'm curious about how this applies on the consumer side. So has there has there been a lot of need for education on why you're different or are consumers just kind of, you know, like getting it right away? Um, the, it's very intuitive once you walk in um, and I'll give you an example. I, and I don't know if you have experience with tattoos or, um, you know, if, if parlors in Toronto or, or very different from um, here, but the um, just from the moment somebody steps into the door, um, it's pretty evident how how we're different. So we don't have um, you know flash art pasted all over the walls. Um, the look is clean, white, airy, very bright, um, very minimalist, uh, no clutter, uh, as as little paperwork as possible, um, and then little things too that that kind of speak to the customer experience. So privacy walls. Um, which believe it or not, are, are not very common. Um, you know, so just clean, um, light colored uh, chairs, the beds uh, for the artists, um, mirrors, plenty of light so you can see exactly what's going on. Um, and we always walk customers through. If somebody comes in with a question, even if it's just, you know, somebody passing by on the street, we'll invite them to come in and take a look. And, and usually they, they pretty quickly um, can understand the difference. Cool. Very cool. So tell me more about the digital marketing that you've been doing and what's really been moving the needle for you. For franchising or for, for local? Both. Um, so I think one thing kind of going back um, to, to my comment earlier, uh, it's so visual. I mean, people want to see, especially with tattoos, people want to see, um, or any kind of, I guess, uh, beauty services category, They want to see what the place looks like inside and they want to see the results of your work. And so we lean very heavily on um, visual, you know, uh, Instagram is huge for us um, for a lot of tattoo artists that that's a very, um, you know, kind of key tool that they use. Um, But it's also, we also kind of incorporate that educational element. So we don't want, for example, our Instagram feed, we don't want it to just be, you know, tattoo, tattoo, tattoo picture. Um, we try to mix in kind of common questions that people have, um, any upcoming events that, that we're going to be uh, present at. Um, so it's, it's just really very heavily visual. Um, awesome. And, and uh, is that the same on the franchise development side? I think on the franchise development side, we try to focus more on uh, the real estate and what what the shop looks like inside, because I think that really conveys a message of, you know, you see tattoo franchising and you might kind of dismiss it based on the idea that you have of, of what a tattoo parlor looks like. But, you know, the, the kind of quick visual that you see will, you'll understand how different it is right away. So that, um, again, is very important, but, you know, we don't just put necessarily the artist's work on there. Um, it's more the the interior. It's more the kind of minimalist design, um, and it's also the um, kind of targeted to the cities where we're looking to expand. Mm-hmm. Very interesting stuff. So, Maria, one question I always like to ask guests is, what advice would you give someone just starting out as a franchisor? Um, well, I'm still learning, so <laughs> I'm not sure I'm the best uh, source of advice here. But um, <laughs> I'd probably go back to you know be picky about it. Um, you you know you don't know what other brands' situation is like at any given moment, so um, you know be picky about it and set a strategy on what's going to work for you, um, and not just you know kind of the the fear of missing out on what other folks are doing. Cool. I like that. Yeah. Again, like going back to being picky, that's something that I hear over and over again. And I feel like it just can't be stressed enough, no matter who you are or what situation you're in. I I would agree with that. I mean, I I think in many ways, it's kind of like, you know, almost like a marriage. It's at least a 10 year commitment. Um, It's hundreds of thousands of dollars in, you know, invested in into this endeavor. 
um, and, you know, man hours, resources, energy, time, you name it, you know, so it's, um, it, it's not something you want to rush into for, for both franchisee and franchisor, I would say. Mm-hmm. So speaking of marriage, your partners with your husband, what has that been like, you know, balancing both the personal and the work life? <laughs> I actually, I love it. Um, it's great because we have our own different uh, kind of strengths. Um, and it, it's been a really good balance of, you know, the areas where um, I'm not strong in, he happens to be strong in. So we, we, we find a really good way to work together. It's a good rhythm. Awesome. Very cool stuff. Very cool stuff. One, one question I want to ask you, Maria, what is something that I should have asked you, but I haven't yet today that you really want to share? Oh my goodness. Um, <laughs> well, you could ask me if I have any tattoos. <laughs> well, yeah, I should have asked you that first. Yeah. Do you have any tattoos? I do. I have, I have three now. Um, they're not huge, but again, we're, and, and they were all done at our flagship location. We actually didn't have any tattoos, um, before we got started. So, um, the, and, and kind of the, uh, you know, just going back to, um, the idea that we talked about, you know, you can own a a tattoo parlor and not be covered head to toe, you know, in tattoos. (laughs) Um, we've had artists who only have, you know, one tattoo. Um, so it's just kind of, you know, you don't need that. You don't need to be covered in tattoos to be a good artist. Um, but you know, yeah, it's just the, the demographic of, of who's coming in to get it, um, today is so much more different than, um, you know, probably 20, 30 years ago. Mm -hmm, mm Mm-hmm. Totally. All right, Maria. So we are, um, you know, I could chat with you all day, but I want to be respectful of your time. So I like to end all episodes with something that I call the lightning round. So it's a few fast paced questions coming at you. Are you ready? Yeah. yeah, Yes. (laughs) All right. So first question, what is your favorite tool or app that you cannot live without? Um, okay. I'm very old school in that I have a paper calendar. Um, I have about four digital calendars, but if anything is really critical, um, it's going to go on, on the paper calendar. And if it's on there, it's going to get done no matter what. So that's, that's my go-to. I love it. Keeping it analog. I appreciate yeah. that. <laughs> Next question is what is your favorite book? Um, business book or just look, could be any book. Oh, um, I'm actually rereading one of my favorites right now. Um, crime and punishment Dostoevsky. Oh. <laughs> Uh, the last time I read it was probably 15, 16 years ago, and um, I forgot a lot about it. So I'm kind of re, re, uh, reacquainting myself with it. <laughs> Very cool. Um, who is a franchise leader that you look up to? Um, oh, man, it's so hard. I, <laughs> I don't know if I can pick just one, honestly. Um, and like I said, I'm still getting to know this space. Um, I, this is going to be a little bit of a cop-out answer, but I think uh, any emerging franchisors right now, because it is, um, it's a tough environment out there. And, you know, I just want to be real about that for a second. Um, and there are so many brands, um, you know, competition is probably like nothing that, that has ever been seen in this environment. Um, you know, not to, not to forget the the pandemic and, and everything else that's going on right now as well. So, um, I just, you know, consistently see great ideas and businesses that, um, I didn't know, you know, could be franchised, um, getting out there. Um, and I just have to, you know, kind of give a shout out to my fellow m- emerging franchisors for, for getting out there and doing what they do every day. I love it. That's such a great answer. Mm-hmm. All right, Maria, last question. I promise. Okay. <laughs> Where can people find out more about you and your franchise? Sure. Um, the easiest thing for franchising would be to visit inktattoos.com slash franchising. Um, so that's ink with the I N Q. And tattoos is actually a really commonly misspelled word. So it's T A P T O O S. <laughs> um, so inktattoos.com slash franchising has all the information about um, you know, what somebody needs, the requirements, the financials. Um, if you're a broker or a consultant, um, there's a special um kit we can send you as well. Just kind of let us know that that's something you might be interested in. Um, uh, for me personally, I'm on LinkedIn, Maria Juhov. Um always happy to connect and, uh, you know, take it from there. Awesome. Maria, thank you so much for coming on. I know our listeners really appreciate it, especially fellow emerging ones. So thank you so much. Thank you for having me. It's been great to chat with you. It did go by really fast. Like you said. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. Thank you so much for listening to this episode of the franchise marketing podcast. If you found this episode useful, share it with a friend and subscribe now so you don't miss out on any upcoming episodes. And until then, happy marketing.